Yeah, yeah, yeah. Let's get this video going into full screen. Hello, hello, everyone. Jay Troni is here. Just waiting on my guest to come in. Once again, y'all, this is Jay Troni, aka Governor of the Galaxy. You are now Gavin with the Guffler. I have a very special guest coming in today. Just waiting on him to come on in here. Hope everybody's doing well today. Here in April 14th, 2020. Just waiting on our special guest to come in. Man, I've had fun with this, y'all, so far, man. It's gotten with the governor and whatnot. Let's see here. Let's see here. Me check something. I'll make sure I invited him, y'all. Hold on, y'all. Y'all bear with me, man. I definitely sent it to him, y'all. Okay, okay. Y'all just bear with me here. Ah, there we go. There we go, y'all. My apologies. All right, brother. Are you on here? We we getting you connected. Just waiting on my guests to come in, y'all. Then we're gonna go ahead and start this thing. There he is. Can you hear me, brother? I hear you. Yeah. All right, we're back on, y'all. We gonna do this again. Get it popping. Are you gonna put the blinds down, huh? Yeah. Well, I'm gonna try. <laughs> That's not gonna work. Okay. Don't even trip, man. It ain't. It ain't. It ain't hurting it none. Okay. Cool. All right, ladies and gentlemen, once again. Oh, oh man, you are destructive. You are so destructive. Listen here, y'all. This is Jay Trony, is the governor of the galaxy. Once again, this is Gavin with the governor. Today I have my brother, my soul tribe brother on here. We call him Lion from the Moon. Without further ado, tell him who you are, where you're from, and what it's all about, brother. Peace, peace. The Lion from the Moon. Shamai Oshunde, Shango Oshun, um, from Los Angeles, California. And how's it out in L.A. today? How's the weather in L.A. today? Sunshine, baby. It's beautiful. Everybody's out there walking. They got their face mask on, you know, but, you know, folks is home, so they're walking around the neighborhood, getting their exercise in. Yeah. We chilling, making, just uh, started making a meal, you know, cooking some food. Nice. Getting some time to just relax at home. Yeah, I'm definitely gonna have to get my grub on when I get off of here. Uh, what's the call it, man? So, to any that don't know you, some people will know you, some people don't. Um, you got you got a couple things going on in your life right now. Let's start with our connection. What built our bridge is the music, and uh, tell people about your musical journey. Let's hear about that. Okay, my musical journey. Uh, okay, so my musical journey starts, I come from a musical family. Um, so I was told that I was singing before I could talk. Uh, my father is Philip Bailey of Earth, Wind & Fire. I sing with Earth, Wind & Fire. I've been singing with Earth, Wind & Fire for 10 years. Started singing with them in 2010 um, on the road. Uh, so I started singing before I could talk. 
I was singing, uh, I still don't remember the name of this song, so I'm going to sing, you know, ba, 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 ba. Yeah. Uh, it's, a, it's a later Earth, Wind, Fire song. I wonder if any, anyone who sees this is going to know what song that is. Yeah. Uh, I can't remember the name. But um, so, yeah, grew up just listening to good music, uh, watching Alvin and the Chickmunks, Jim and the Holograms, you know, uh, cartoon music. And, you know, because they, they also were playing like, you know, remember Alvin and the Chickmunks was playing things like Michael Jackson and, you know, giving you the music of the day. For the kids, you know what I'm saying? No, nah, let me tell you, man. Alvin and the Chipmunks, and even Jen. Let's throw Alvin and the Chipmunks. Like, at the end of the day, I was a huge fan, and they weren't no slouches, man. They not weren't at all. And it made not me, at all. It made me want to speed up every record so I could hear Alvin the Alvin remix. Like every <laughs> record I at that time, I used to always speed up so I could hear it in in that in that you know in that high range, man. It was it was crazy. I still have the Chickmunks' Greatest Adventure in my closet on DVD, nice. uh, where they race around the world. They race the chipettes around the world. Yeah, and man, the soundtrack to that's amazing. And so the, yeah, grew and up. Jim, Jim's voice was outrageous. Let's Yo, truly, truly, truly outrageous. <laughs> like that chick, whoever that chick that was Jim's voice was off the meter. She had crazy range though do you remember uh there was an episode of jim where they would like did this redo of beauty and the beast and they sang this song all love makes you beautiful to me yeah man so yeah there was just all these like beautiful melodies and stuff like that i grew up watching that stuff uh i saw west side story really early so i was walking around the neighborhood going you know, doing stuff like that. Yeah. Super into West Side Story. Just watched it a couple of days ago. Um, so yeah, that musical uh, background. Then from there, I moved. You know, obviously, I was listening to Babyface, Boys to Men. Boys to Men had made me want to refine myself musically. From there, I went to uh, singing in the Black Church uh, at uh, Christ Memorial, which is the church of Andre Crouch. Rest in power. Andre Crouch. Um, I was uh, singing with him in his uh, church choir from the age of 15 until I ended up, and until I transitioned and went to music school where we met. Um, also started uh, my adopted mother, Olivia McClurkey, and I was singing in different uh, gospel uh, or praise and worship groups around uh, Los Angeles with her, she's a, the sister of Donnie McClurkin and used to sing background with Whitney Houston, rest in power also to two ancestors that stay with me. Yeah. Um, so from there, went to Berkeley College of Music where we met, um, went there to study jazz. Uh, Cause as I was telling you before, Stevie Wonder, I'm a big Stevie Wonder fan. He's my spiritual guru. Not personally, but you know what I'm saying? But he did. Stevie Wonder told me to go listen to jazz because I was asked him, what, why, your music sounds like nothing I ever heard before. What were you listening to? I was wise enough to ask people, what were you listening to? Yeah. And so he said, listen to jazz, you know? And so that took me to Berkeley uh, where we met. From there, graduated from Berkeley, started, uh, singing in a band, a local band, Soul City, around the New England area, um, New Eng uh, Boston, Maine, uh, upper New York. Um, did that from maybe 2005 to 2009. Yeah. yeah. Uh, was teaching music, teaching beginning piano and voice in Wellesley and Weston. And then went, came back here to LA uh, and that's when I started working with Earth, Wind & Fire. I worked with my father off and on in, in between those times. We took a, a solo trip to Japan. And so I did some things uh, with him doing backgrounds for his solo project. Um, but yeah, that's pretty much my musical journey. The one thing that I did before any of that that I left out, when I was really, really young, I did this, um, it was this Christian cartoon so it's kind of like voiceovers. I was singing with this Christian cartoon called The Christian Chums, where uh, these, they had to go find these gold records 
the top 10 hits and it was the 10 commandments you know what i'm saying mm. so they had things like stop 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 before you steal stop 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 and think of how you feel you know stuff like that <laughs> so, yeah my musical journey has been an interesting one it's kind of just been yeah a journey <laughs> you know yeah man it's, it's interesting man to to know like you can you can look back you know you always do full circles man and you can look back where you started you know, and, and to see where you, where you, how far you've come. It's a constant process. It's a constant evolution, man. And it's, it, you know, it's always interesting, you know, like you say with Stevie and these other people that you had, we've, we've been blessed, you know, like I, I could say my equivalent to Stevie and you talking is the equivalent that I had when I was conversating with Bootsy. That's what, that's what put me on the funk train so hard. Yeah, kind of sealed the deal because he was like, "You are a new United Funketeer. You got to carry on the funk." And I, you know, yeah. it, it hit you in your heart, and you got to run. You got to run when it because not everybody will get that confirmation. You know what I mean? And we and, and we need that. I think we we both talked about that. You know, like it's it's the continuation of that circle. Like we need the new Funketeers. We need you know we need to continue the legacy, man, because. I mean, let me not get critical about things, <laughs> but yeah, man, that uh, I experienced when we were in school. I don't know if this was heavy on you, but I knew why I came there and I knew I wanted to create that type of music, but there was like pressure, even, you know, I left LA because of that pressure. Like anytime I was like, hey, let's write a song. People were like, okay, I'll make a track. And I was like, nah, man, I just want to write a song. Like, you know, if I told you to sing me a song, you're gonna sing me a melody and some lyrics. Like, you don't need a track, you know, there's a song, you know? Right. And, um, but, you know, when we were at school, I saw people putting down their instruments, starting to like, you know, go to the computers and just that process of um, everything has to be what's happening right now. You know what I'm saying? What's popular right now, you know? And, uh, you know, even though I knew in my heart what I wanted to do and what I was part of, you know, in your head, you get it at that head trip of where it's like, well, dang, should I just do whatever? Should I, you know, I ain't going to tell you who said this to me, but somebody told me, he said, man, pick one guy from the 70s and mimic him. Interesting. Yeah, that's what they tell you know. Instead of trying to find, you, you know, and be your authentic self, you know, and add to the art form, you know, pick one guy and, and, and mimic him. That's interesting, man. You know, I don't know if this is the same guy, but um, one thing that stuck with me, like at first, like I was in high school and I could make myself sound like all, you know, we love the 90s R&B. That, that, that was our childhood, you know, meat and potatoes and like, you know, I could sound like all those cats. I could mimic them so well. And my first music mentor in high school was like, who are you? You do this, yes. you do this really good, but who are you? And I used to get so mad because I used to get so much attention from from singing like all these cats and, and, and the girls would like it and everybody's like, oh, that's so amazing. And she would look at me and be like, that's all well and good, but who are you? And, Let and, the and like, be unbroken, because who, who's, uh, you remember whose story that is also, right? That scene from Ray. Yeah. And homegirl had to say that to him. She was like, you know, that's good and everything, but who are you? And he got mad at first, but then he had to find out. He was, and then he found soul. He was like, okay, I'm not Nat King Cole. Yeah, I can imitate Nat King Cole, but... You know, and then he, that's, you know, the genius of Ray Charles, man. Man, and, and it's deep, man. You know, you, you, and another thing in college, somebody told me that was like, there's a process to greatness when it came to music. And the process is uh, assimilation, imitation. Imitation, assimilation, innovation. Innovation. Yeah. And so I was right. like, you know, it's important because everybody gets something from everybody. Anybody that we ever loved, was watching somebody else and then they turned and then they put their spin on it. So right. I do think right now, I, I can say this, like I do think right now that things are getting a little bit too robotic and, and no, that we're not celebrating individualism anymore in music like right. we should. 
And, and right. instead of instead of me constantly talking about the problem, it's time that we become the solution. And that's and that's what I and that's and that's where I, that's all I could say about it. Yo, that's straight up, brother. I mean, because you know, I that's that's my affirmation to myself. Because the other day I was down here like, like man, I don't want to keep, I don't want to be feeling like no damn hater, you know. And then it, it, it yeah, and it just dawned on me. It's like, you know what? Instead of talking about what they're not doing, why don't you just use that and just you know do what you're supposed to do? You know what I'm saying? And and yeah, man, absolutely. This is what it's all about. Now you you know you've been blessed you know to be be under this uh, Earth, Wind, and Fire umbrella. Um, what is your innovation to it? What, let's talk about your music and where you carry from that legacy. What what is it that that you're? What, what's your music about? Okay, and and that I want to say. Oh, look at me throwing my leggings around. Ah, that's what it, it brings us right to it. Brings us right to it. So, um, if you go to my website, linefromthemoon.com, you're gonna see a picture of me. Like <laughs> it says, linefromthemoon.com voice of the ancestors, right? <laughs> and so when I was in school, I was calling it black Renaissance music, you know? Um, so just like you're saying, the innovation, the imitation is, is one thing. I'm not trying to, I don't wanna sound, I don't wanna be like, I'm trying to sound like nothing that's ever happened. You know what I'm saying? That that is I mean, not a I, real thing. That is not a real thing. Yeah, that ain't a real thing. You know what I'm saying? I'm, I I see myself as a part of the legacy, part of the circle. You know, a soul singer. You know, that every soul singer, like you said, you come from a lineage. You know, and you just continue that line, and you bring you you add your own, you bring your own voice to it, but is really your ancestors singing through you, you know? So Indeed. That, that, that's really where my heart and my mind is when it comes to the music. Like I said, uh, there's, the, there's a book by a, a teacher named Chika Akua. It's called Success Quest. And the first chapter of this book is called Mission Meditation. I meditate on my mission daily. And we talked about, you know, Maurice, and his vision and how we're living in his vision, how I'm living in his vision. Yeah. Um, so I meditate on my mission daily. And it tells you to ask yourself three questions. Who am I? What is my mission and my purpose? And how do I fulfill my mission and my purpose? Mm. So who am I? I am lying from the moon. I'm Shamai Oshunde Shango Oshun. That's who I am, mm. you know? What is my mission and my purpose? My mission and my purpose is to radiate culture and spiritual transformation and to create love, beauty, and harmony. Mm. You know, when I, I, am a, I am a magnet to beauty. I love beauty. That's what I heard in West Side Story. That's what I heard in Stevie Wonder's voice. And I'm here. I, I resonate with that because I'm part of that. And I'm too perpetuate and recreate that to continue to add more beauty and more harmony and more love to the world so mm. that's my mission and my purpose yeah how do i do that i do that through singing forming my culture through uh comedic yoga teaching people how to visualize um but through music man through through the music of our culture soul jazz r b blues it's all one thing, which now I, I call, I just use the blanket statement, soul music. When yeah. I went to school, I was heavily focusing on jazz. Um, but all of the greats, John Coltrane, Duke Ellington, all of the pinnacles of the art form that they call jazz, they weren't down with that name. They were like, why are we calling it jazz? Why don't we just, why don't you say Duke Ellington's music? Why don't I just say John Coltrane's music? So, and the great jazz singer, Betty Carter, rest in power, said she has a song called Jazz Ain't Nothing But Soul. So that's why I embrace, I'm a soul singer, you know? That's that what I'm talking about. Blues and gospel and jazz and, you know, everything that's, that, that has 
gone before me and everything that I've went through, you know, on this musical journey. Man, you know? we are soul singers, brother. Soul singers. Soul singers. You know we are soul singers. You heard me. <laughs> and, and, and man, and you know, and that's been the beautiful thing about what even has built our relationship up from the moment we met is just our love for no boundaries and our love for the beauty and, and, and how far we can really push the envelope. You know, and, and you know what we, what we really tapped in, remember we really met eye to eye on Morrison. Yeah. On Jim Morrison. That's, you know. I believe like, it. I don't remember it, but I believe it. I totally believe I it. I didn't hear, you know, because, uh, you know, the movie The Doors came out when I was in high school and I'm in the Valley. That, like, took the Valley by storm. Like, everybody was in, you know, that, that you know, uh, The Doors is, you know, L.A., you know what I'm saying? Yeah. So that kind of reinvigorated this Doors thing. And, yeah, man, he's one of my favorite vocalist if you really listen to Jim Morrison and and so when I met you and I was like man this cat digs Jim Morrison also like when you hear Jim Morrison in comparisons to other rock vocalists you could wonder what was so special you know he didn't play an instrument you know and he didn't have like the high singing uh vocal stylings of like the cat that was singing in Les hey hey mama then the way you move you didn't have all that Wah! He didn't have all that stuff, you yeah. know. But what he had was, and what I saw was this like, he had that baritone voice that could give you Frank Sinatra, and then he could go into this Muddy Waters blues singer, you know, uh, the Lizard King, you know, what I'm saying Mr. Mojo Rising, yeah, you know. Yeah. So, yeah, man, it, yeah, we, we, we really we really met on that level where we could see the, the spirit behind what people were doing. You know what I'm saying? And, and that's really important, man. And, and, I, and I stress this to everybody because, you know, us going to music school turns people into extreme music critics, you Ooh. know? And, and people start judging the music more on the technicality than the spirituality. And my thing is, is like, I never believed because I wasn't one that was trying to learn every riff in the book. I wasn't trying to be the one that, that you know, that knew all the modes and all the skills, not, not knocking, knowing that stuff. But my, my big thing was always like, I might not be able to out sing you technically, but my spirit, is, you're going to feel me. You're going to feel me. So anybody that I've ever studied and really drawn me to them, it, it, you know, of course, Stevie had the, he had the best of both worlds. He had the technicality and the spirituality. Of course, that makes you a supreme master, but you can also be a master in your own right if that's not your specialty, but your spirit and your conviction behind what you're singing and you're talking about is so heavy that it's undeniable. Yeah. My lady friend, my lady friend helped me understand because it was just a feeling thing for me and Stevie, but she helped me understand why I connect to Stevie so much. And it's the cancer moon, you know. Um, we were listening to Stevie and in the, in the, when you listen to like black music through the, through the history of, 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 of black music, you get these type of um characters of either you're hot or you're cool you know what i'm saying either you're hot huh, you're like oh you're hot you know what i'm saying or you're cool you know what i'm saying and i never feel that way i don't be like you know what i'm saying hey, man i'm just too i'm i'm cool you know what i'm saying like i can act cool you know what i'm saying but that's usually when I'm running, you know what I'm saying? Right. You know, and I can get hot. Uh, yeah. and that's not real, you know what I'm saying? But um, we were listening to Stevie, and she said, Stevie's wet. That's what it is, brother. I be wet. I, I be, and that, that's, that's the feeling that I be, I'm like, I need that. You know what I'm saying? That's the feeling that I felt in Stevie Wonder that, you know, and that wetness, I think it's a, it's a certain vulnerability 
you know what I'm saying, that that hot and cool don't touch, you know what I'm saying? And that it just, you know, it it it, it resonates with my cancer moon. We talk about the fluidity, man. And and it's funny, man, because you and I our main two, our sun and our moon are are, you know, literally fire and water. Right. But they're right. but but we're crossed, we're crisscrossed. Right, reflections of each other. Yeah, so that's interesting, you know, and then like, you know, and and then also like I told you before, that makes me also a moon lion. I, I am a Leo moon, like I, you know, it's it's there. So you know, yeah. but that's just to me the you, the universe works in mysterious ways, man. When you do connect, when you do get in line with your path, or even if you don't, it's also mathematical. It's also it's gridded up, man. It's like there's reasons for every season, man. And and it's yeah. deep and you know, and, and you run into your soul tribe. It's all it's it's all an equation, a, a, a the divine equation, man. And Absolutely. And Absolutely. Now we tell me life is divine. Yeah, yeah. Now tell me, let's dig deeper into um this comedic yoga and just your uh your intrigue and your your involvement with, with the comedic practice tell us about this yoga and, and, and your your attachment to the comedic lifestyle well i've been studying comedic yoga for a long time um ever since basically ever since i started studying yoga but real off and on you know uh i got into yoga uh after injuring myself uh when i before i came to school working at kinko's and uh Damn, i took kinko's. a yoga Yep, Kinko's. They don't even know what Kinko's is no more. Uh, Kinko's is gone. Kinko's is FedEx Kinko's now. Right. Uh, um, so I was working at Kinko. I heard myself lifting boxes. Um, and, excuse me, um, I did physical therapy and everything like that. Kind of healed up a little bit, but still had issues. I took a yoga course in junior college um, just kind of as a, I just needed extra credit. That thing went away like that, you mm -hmm. know? So from that point, I started dabbling with yoga. Of course, I've always, my mother has just raised me to have, you know, uh, black pride. I never pledged allegiance to a flag in my life, you know? Mm -hmm. So whenever I look towards something, I look, you know, okay, where are we, are we doing it? Where, you know, so I found comedic yoga started studying that. I've never actually um, been studied or certified in any other yoga uh, style. So studying comedic yoga off and on. And then I decided to get certified when I read an article um, by Sonny Rollins. Sonny Rollins said how uh, 40 years of yoga practitioner helped him be a better musician. Mm. And I'm like, oh, you know, and like I said, my whole thing has been like trying to be, you know, trying to get that jazz thing, trying to, you know, like trying to get the the understanding and the, 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 there's, you know, there's a pantheon, you know, Rollins, Coltrane, Parker, you know, so when, when he said this is what made him be a better musician, I'm like, oh, okay. And then right around, just like we're saying, synchron, uh, synchronicity, Right after I read that article, I received, um, so I started uh, inviting, because I was singing, I'm singing with Earth, Wind and Fire. So I started inviting different uh, people of our community that I felt have contributed to the community and that have contributed to my understanding and my growth. Uh, you know, I just hit them up and offer them tickets to a show. So since I had been studying uh, the work of Yasir Rahotep, I hit him up and I was like, hey man, I just want you to know I've been, you know, working with your DVDs for years and, you know, I'm just grateful and, you know, if you ever want to come to a show, here's two tickets to Earth, Wind, Fire show. Um, so we had made that connection and then I read the article and right after I read that article, I received an email from him like, you know, yoga certifications, you know, certify as a teacher. I'm like, okay, wait a minute, this, you know. And so uh, I looked through the schedule and like I said, I'm on and off the road. So a lot of times I can't make things as, you know, it's like a four month dedication. Yeah. 
the one that the certification that was taking place in Las Vegas, which is, you know, to Los Angeles, every date that they had available, I was off the road. So I was like, that's not coincidence, you know? And so, yeah, I decided to go for it. And yeah, so I got certified in that yoga practitioner. Um, and yeah, that's what I'm doing. You know, it's a, it's a holistic disease preventative practice that basically what the yogis figured out is that you got, so you're, you got your parasympathetic and your sympathetic nervous system, two sides of the same coin. One controls your voluntary actions, one controls your involuntary actions. You know, heartbeat, blood rate, involuntary, that's just going on arm movement, all the stuff I'm doing, voluntary. The attribute of that is the kind of crossroads is your breathing. That's mm -hmm. something that goes on automatically, but then you can also control it. You can slow your breathing down, you can hold your breath. So with disciplining and control and focus on the breath is how yogis have figured out how to regulate their heart rate, regulate the different uh, stress hormones that are dumping into their blood system. So that's really what comedic yoga focuses on. And you know, um, what yoga is about on a health level is, you know, really regulating your response to stress in the environment mm. through controlling your breath. You know, you use your breath, harmonizing with the breath, and you move yourself through more complicated postures. So this is all a practice for as you move through life, maintaining a calm breath and maintaining a, a, a level the way the stress and the hormones that are being dumped are not gonna be toxifying your body. Hence like what I just got through singing about my new song, So Cool, Stay Cool. Stay Cool, Stay, Stay Cool. cool. Now, it's, it's interesting, man. What um, what is the difference between comedic yoga versus any other practice of yoga? What what is the differentiation? Like? Okay, so uh, comedic yoga is yoga that comes from the culture and the tradition of Kemet. Kemet is the indigenous name for the civilization that we know of as Egypt. Egypt is the Greek term. So it's like um, Americans, we call uh, the people of Japan, Japan or Japanese. It's not Japan, it's Nippon. You know, that's their indigenous name. You know, yeah. I may mess that up. I, correct me if I'm wrong, anyone that's from there. But so the indigenous name is Kemet. We call it Egypt because we're looking at it through the eyes of a Greek tradition. Mm. The connection between uh, the civilization of Kemet and the civilization of uh, the Indus Valley is Nubians, you know? So we have, uh, those two civilizations have a common ancestry. Yeah. And so if you look at the, um, the culture in the Indus Valley and the mythology and just basically the spiritual tradition, you know, they're talking about the same thing in Kemet. And, you know, that happens also in ancient Chinese cultures also, you know. Um, so there's a shared um, practice of civilization between these ancient civilizations and culture mm. um, because they have shared ancestry. And Kemetic yoga just means this was, it's uh, the practice that is based on this culture rather than how it developed in the Indus Valley. Deep, deep, deep. Preach, 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 yoga master. Preach, preach, <laughs> preach. So now I don't call myself a, a yoga master because that's also uh, Hindu. That's from the Indus Valley. I yeah. refer to myself as a Shamayi, which is a praise and worship singer. And part of the part of that tradition, which I I learned the practice of yoga or whatever we called it in Kemet, we didn't call it yoga, but you know, we're in this civilization. So we, we refer to it as comedic yoga. The practice of that was embraced by the priesthood class, the Shemai or the Shemaiit, you know, and they would use that as a discipline to harmonize themselves with the divine. 
you know, it was just part of the practice of tuning. So I think of it as instrumentalists have to tune their instruments. You know mm. what I'm saying? A guitar mm. player tunes it. That's how I, I use comedic yoga to tune my instruments as a shamai. I tune myself, my heart rate, my, my, my emotional state, my breath, and my mind in order to sing from my, from my heart and my soul. Once again, to be a supreme soul singer. To be a supreme soul singer, brother. <laughs> I can dig it. I can dig it, man. And, and you know, and, and that's, that's really interesting right now, especially with everything that's going on, because we are finding that with this, quote, pandemic going on, that it is attacking a lot of, uh, a lot of African Americans due to health issues. Yeah. And once again, it's, it's like, I, I, I commend you because, and, and I pray that, you know, that your mission brings in a lot of people because it, it, it does. Like I admit, man, when I went out to LA, bro, I know I'm very tapped spiritually, but I got a lot of work to do when it comes to my health. And one thing uh, that we haven't never really spoke on is that I watched before you went further into this, I watched how being healthy is a very important thing to you. Yeah. And, it, and it convicted my spirit. You know what I'm saying? Because it's like, yes, if I am going to be here and, and, and part of our mission is to heal this world and to be a solution, I need to solve a lot of things in myself. And, yeah. and, and honestly, man, you know, I think more people like you are going to be the ones to step up and, and heal that part of our culture because as you can see, when stuff like this is coming along, the health is making us the weaker in, in yes. the situation. More of our people die earlier from issues like diabetes and stress and heart issues that are connected to diet and lifestyle than, um, than people die of, than our people are dying of drug abuse. You know, I mean, that's one thing I see, you know, when you look at, I mean, you know, no shame in the game, but like Gil Scott Heron lived for a minute. He was, he, you know, and I'm they're not promoting, you know, I'm not promoting that to shoot heroin or anything like that. But, um, but I saw, and I got a call from my father because his friend had died. And this would happen when I was in school. Mm. And he was the one who told me, get it together now because it's tough because he started trying to get it together after his dear friend Robert Brookins died. Great yeah. musician, R&B singer, used to be the musical director for Earth, Wind, Fire. When Robert Brookins passed, my father started really stepping his game back up with, with the health. And then he called me and said, hey, do now while you're younger. Because once you've set patterns and stuff like that, it, it gets even harder. Yeah. You know? And so, yeah, man, we, got, we really got to look at that, the, the, the health. Health is yeah. our wealth. If it makes you feel any better, you have affected to me, and I have been eating a ton of avocados lately. Word up. Just that's because good. I remember you just eating an avocado, and that's all you ate, and I looked at you like you were crazy. <laughs> but it, it sunk in. The, the seed was planted, brother. You planted a seed in me, and I have been eating, especially with all this, all this going on. I have definitely tapped even more into my healthier eating lifestyle. Hotel. The divine in me recognizes the divine in you. That's it, man. That's it. So the music and the yoga and the spirituality, man, you, I've watched you. We've watched each other since we've met. We're almost 20 years deep now. And, and we've watched each other evolve. We've watched our friendship evolve, man. You've become an amazing. You always were amazing, but you, I've seen you become even more amazing with time as you, on your journey, man. And I, I, I do, I, I like doing this because, on my journey, I've met so many amazing people, like including yourself. So part of me getting into these interviews is to expose the amazing people that have inspired me to be who I am. You know what I mean? And, and I know with us, when we met, you know, and I'm sure you've dealt with this a lot with people that you've met. It's like to, to you know, to decipher the, the idea of what it is versus an actual relationship. You know what I mean? And uh, just because people get excited because they know your lineage, you know? Mm. And um, 
it's been interesting to separate those, you know. So now it's at a point you're where the one who always numbers. brought me close. Huh? You know, it's a, you the one who always brought me close, you know, because you know, you know my you know from our experience in school, I always felt so so like left out of things and wanted, you know, and I didn't realize that that was happening with people where, where it was like, you know, people felt like I had something that, you know, like, I'm just like, man, we're homies. Can we make music together? And, you know, you were just always like, hey, man, like, not, you know, just approachable, just ready to, you know, well, we ain't going to talk about, about the, 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 the dorm past <laughs> how we really met <laughs> the the spirits the, the spirit. connection of the spirits now nah, man you, you know um and i think it was just the blessing of me to realizing that i come from a lineage and that fame doesn't have to be what's powerful about your lineage you know yeah. like one thing i realized and we can learn from each other is that you know i came from a family my grandfather in my eyes and to the world, and I will, is he was a king in his own right. He was a king, my grandmother was a queen. They had 13 children with each other, and my family is, a, is an African-American tribe. Right. You know, so it's like, I take that legacy into everything that I do, because I realized that, you know, and it was like you touched on earlier when we, we did this before, with everybody trying to find value in a brand or, or, or find value in um, fame and all this and all that, when it's not, those are not really the things that are valuable. What's valuable is the legacy and, and the things that we leave this earth with, no matter how many people know or don't know about it. Right. So then let me say, and this is something that my bro brother, uh, Tony Browder, Anthony Browder hit me to, which, you know, we, we've carried this tradition over, and this speaks exactly to what you're talking about. We've carried the tradition over, uh, you know, because we, we were re-identifying ourselves when we were told we were nothing, or we were told we were slaves. To hear that we came from kings and queens was uplifting, and we did. You know, we came from the first rulers of the planet, you know. But what's more important that, that, that Tony hit me to, that, you're, that which, what you're saying and, you, and you've always done this, man. You're the one who told me, you know, as far as this whole comedic yoga thing, we weren't talking about comedic yoga, but you told me, hey, man, you know, soul singing, singing from the soul, you got to just jump in. You can't, you can't, you know, you know, study all day. And we really know it's about the courage to do, you know, and that's real. That, you know, it's the courage to surrender the spirit. Yeah. Um, but in, in what you were saying with that, what Tony Brown hit me to was that there's only so many people that could, you know, there's like a king and a queen and there's only so many. So we didn't all come from kings and queens. That's not really important. What, what, because we, we've been trying to, you know, uh, associate ourselves with value, but the actual value is the truth of the matter is we came from geniuses. Mm. Mm. geniuses in the arts geniuses in sciences you know we were the first person to track the stars we were the first person to, to to build homes and build monuments we came from geniuses mathematical geniuses science chemists you know and that's the part that we have to re-embrace is that it ain't about the money it ain't about the glitz and glamour and it ain't about the I'm, you know, was the head nigga in charge. You know what I'm saying? It's about everybody's got a spirit, a genius within them. Are you gonna let that light shine so that we can all benefit? And that could be, you know, the person who sweeps the road. You know what I'm saying? You know, half of the thing that we're going through right now with this uh, pandemic, you know, you know from, you know, our ancestors, old oh, black women, Man, they, they swept the porch. They swept the sidewalk. You know what I'm saying? Africans have a, 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 a standard of hygiene that was phenomenal, you know? So it's the culture. It's all the geniuses that made up this culture that is important. 
we come from a legacy of geniuses, all of us, mm. you know, and that's what we, we understood, you know, is that we don't need to be the head nigga in charge, you know, we just need to play our role. That's the one you always said to me, man, everyone, everyone just play their role, play your role. Yeah, it's real, man. You know, and, that, and that's what came into this new project I'm about to drop where, you know, I say sons of the sun for everyone because the new mantra, yeah. the new mantra I give to the world and the whole message, and it is a comedic message because I tapped into the sun, God, with this album. And, and that was my mantra the whole time was I will become, I say it on that song that you love, I say, I will become like the sun the S-U-N, and shine on everyone. Yeah, that's my one. I love that. So that's what it's about, man. And uh, yeah, bro, I can see that, it, uh, that it's going it, to it's gonna round this up. I oh, we got in. We, we got in. <laughs> we got it in, man. It's your man. We, we go, you know, what cats on said, we go like this. Off on the camera, we go at it, man. Our conversations are always so powerful. I thank you for recording this one with me, man, so we can share this with the world. Cause that's what we're here for. Tell people how to get in touch with you. You know, they want to tap into what you got going on. Please go to my website, lionfromthemoon.com. All spelled correctly, lionfromthemoon.com. You can hit me up on email if you're trying to book something, booking at lionfromthemoon.com. Go to my website, sign up on my newsletter. That will keep you, I will keep you updated about comedic yoga sessions that I might do over Zoom, um, upcoming shows, any recording projects that I'm doing, lionfromthemoon.com, lionfromthemoon on Instagram also, if you just want to see me post pictures and, you know, journey through the, journey through the cosmic journey. Beautiful, man. Beautiful, man. Continue to do what you do, fam. Infinite love and light protection over you throughout it all. This is Jay Tronius. You're gabbing with the governor. Peace. Y'all be blessed out there, man. Stay positive. Stay cool. Hotel, brother. I love you. Love you, too. Peace.